The celiac trunk is the first major vessel that comes off the abdominal aorta. And it comes off, as we said, at about T12L1. It has three branches. And the first branch that it has is the left gastric artery. And this winds around kind of the superior aspect um, of the lesser curvature of the stomach. And it supplies that aspect of the stomach. It also gives off an esophageal branch, um, which supplies gastroesophageal junction and the lower part of the esophagus. So that's quite straightforward. The next is the splenic artery. And this comes off the celiac trunk, and it goes behind the stomach and just above the pancreas. So the pancreas would be somewhere here. And as it goes along, um, it gives off several branches. So it gives off the short gastric branches here. It gives off posterior gastric branches, which aren't depicted on this. And it gives off um, the left gastroploic artery. And this comes around the great curvature, supplies the great curvature, um, and then anastomoses with the right gastroploic as I'll come on to later. The common hepatoduodenal artery is the third branch, um, and it's also called, called the common hepatic sometimes. Um, and this goes on to, um, for the most part, supply the liver via the proper hepatic artery. It also gives off um, the right gastric, which pretty much has a similar function to the left gastric, and they both meet together at an anastomosis. And then it also gives off um, the um, gastroduodenal artery, and this has several branches. Um, the two main aspects are the superior pancreaticoduodenal, um, and there's an anterior superior and then posterior superior, um, and they supply the pancreas from the top. Um, and it also has the right gastroploic. And that again goes on to anastomosis with the left. So the key bits here, I know there's quite a lot on that slide. The key bits here to remember are there are three branches. The left gastric artery supplies the stomach and a bit of the esophagus. The splenic artery um, primarily supplies the spleen, but also gives some supply to the stomach. And the um, hepatoduodenal supplies the liver, so hepato, and the duodenum, and also some aspects of the stomach. Okay? So, as you notice, there was the right and the left gastroploic arteries, and these come together to form the omental arterial arc. As we talked about before, the omentum, so the greater omentum is going from the stomach um, down to the um, transverse colon and then coming back up, and it contains within it arteries. And the arteries that it contains come from the right and the left gastroploic. And these form um, something which is called a, an arterial arcade, um, so essentially a bunch of arteries in a network that contain a lot of blood within them. So if there is trauma to the front of the stomach, that can lead to a lot of bleeding. But there is a lot of fat in there as well, and that often ends up protecting the patient. It's clinically relevant for several reasons. Trauma, as I just mentioned. It was also used more often in the past, and less often now, but in um, kind of surgical flaps, so in plastic surgery. But for certain areas that required quite well vascularised tissue, um, this was a suitable graft that could be used. Um, and one of the areas that they used to use it in um, was the scalp. And it also used to be used, and pretty much is never used, as far as I'm aware, is in cabbage, so in coronary artery bypass grafting. Um, and that was specifically the right gastroploic that used to be used, um, because the rest of the omentum could still survive and supply from the left. So that's the celiac artery.